In this video, I'll cover the, some of the best practices for creating wall section drawings and detail drawings in Revit. The main difference between creating section and detail drawings in Revit versus AutoCAD is in AutoCAD, each one of these drawings is created from scratch using line work. But in Revit, you already have your building modeled in 3D, and so you want to take the most, make the most of that model by setting up the view correctly to serve as a backdrop to fill in more detail um, later to finish the drawing. So um, this video is going to be broken up into two parts. The first part is how to properly set up a section or detail drawing. And then the second part is going into how to then fill in the, the detail uh, to finish the drawing out. So for example, if I want to create a wall section running through this window, I'll go to uh, the View tab and choose Section Tool. And if you're using an OPN template, pull down the Type Selector and you can see you can choose either a building or a wall section tool to use from. Make sure, so make sure you're using the correct um, tag to create the section you want to create. In this case I'll use wall section and then just click to place it. I'll hit escape to get out of the tool. And by clicking on the view it should take me right there. So the first thing you want to do is make sure it's set to the proper scale. Um, in this case I'll, I'll swap the scale out at the bottom from 1 8 to 3 quarter. And then you want to set the detail level to be um, correct. For my wall section, I want it's um, by default brought me in as a coarse detail setting, but I want to change that out by clicking on the box and change it to fine. Changing the detail level to fine now lets me start to see some of the layers of the walls that are being cut. And also, um, if you have a structural model linked into your project like I do, some structural elements will only show up their detail when the detail level of the view is set to fine. So in this case, the joist went from a schematic look to a, a more detailed, realistic look with the webbing. Another really important factor in getting the most out of your model um, when it comes to wall sections and detailed views is making sure that the model has been modeled correctly in section. For example, uh, down here I have a wall that's going all the way to my footing, but really I want the brick layer to extend past um, the slab down. I can achieve this by drawing it in or masking it out, but I really want to model that because that's the, that's the true way that the, the building would be constructed. So to model that, um, I can actually achieve that with the wall by selecting it and then editing its type. From uh, here, I want to click to edit its structure. And then I want to modify the wall down here. But to access the modify button, I need to see the wall in preview, so below I'll click preview, and by default it brings it in uh, in plan. I want to change that to a section preview of the wall, so under the view pull down I'll change it to section, and doing that um, ungraze these buttons down here, and now I can click to modify it. So now to, to modify this wall in section to allow me to slide those layers down, I'm going to zoom in at the bottom here, and you can see I can select each layer individually, and that brings up a little um, blue padlock. The padlock is telling me that the wall layers are actually locked to the rest of the wall. But if I click to unlock it, I can unlock these layers from the rest of the wall and it lets me slide it past. Now that I've got um, both those layers unlocked, the, 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 the only caveat to this function is that I can unlock as many layers as I want to, but they need to be adjacent to each other. So in other words, I can't just unlock this brick layer and this insulation layer because they're not touching each other. Um, I have to unlock um, them all that are adjacent to each other at a time. So now that I've got those unlocked, I'll hit OK, and then OK again to get me out of that window. And now if I select my wall, you can see two arrows um, appear below to, to stretch it in, in um, its base offset. So I can pull it up. And now I can grab this layer um, independently and slide it back down. You'll notice that um, it looks as though there's a second wall in here. And that's because uh, typically in uh, linked structural models, the structural engineer will model the wall as well. But, they, um, but you, you don't necessarily want to see their wall. You want to see the architectural wall because they may not be concerned about things like wall openings or reveals or um, other architectural features. So you can actually hide individual elements of a linked structural model by hovering over it and clicking the tab key. 
You'll know you have an element of a linked structural model because it'll tell you so in the bottom left corner of the screen in text. Once I have the element I want to hide, I'm going to right click on it. Oh, I need to find it again. Right click on it and then under hide and view choose element. Now you can see that's hidden away the structural uh, wall of the structural model and it's left me my architectural wall with um, my layers coming down as I want them. So you'll, you'll find that along with adding the detail that you want to a section drawing, um, also a big part of it is hiding away the parts that you don't want to see because there's a lot of stuff that's going to be modeled in, um, in, your, in your project that um, doesn't necessarily work for your view. Another part of this view that isn't correctly modeled is my floor slab. I should have a thickened end here, um, but it's only been modeled flat across. Um, again, this could be achieved by just drawing it in, but um, really the correct way to do it is to model that thickened slab. A good rule of thumb to know um, what you should be drawing in and what you should be modeling is if the item or element appears in more than one view or more than one section, um, chances are that's a pretty good indication that it should be modeled instead of just drawn in so that you aren't constantly repeating yourself. So to model in thickened slabs, um, it's pretty easy, but you need to go to a plan view um, to add a thickened edge to this floor. So I'm going to go back to uh, floor plan level one. And over here, I need to get access to my floor, so I'm just going to temporarily hide away this wall. So I'm going to select it and hit HH to hide it away until I can hover and, 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 and see my floor edge. So to add a thickened end to it, I'm going to go to the Home tab, pull down Floor, and then choose Slab Edge. In my Type Selector, I'll choose the um, correct thickened edge I need. And if you don't see the one you need, you can create your own custom one. Um, I've created a video on that um, that talks about profiles, so look for the video on profiles. But in, in any case, um, once you have the uh, thickened slab edge you need, all you need to do is hover over and choose the edge of the floor um, to place it to, and then click. I'll hit Escape to get out of that tool, and then I'll go um, click on back of my section, and now you can see it's brought in a uh, thickened end for my slab. You can choose it, edit its type to select the proper material. Another item that is uh, actually worth modeling is going to be a coping section. And if you're using an OPN template or project, then you should have access to an actual 3D um, coping piece that I, that I created. Um, and it's called OPN coping. Once you have that um, component loaded into the project, uh, you can the, the coping piece is actually attached to a wall. Is actually attached to a wall um, by placing it on the wall itself. And an easy way to place the coping on walls is to go to a 3D view. So I'll click on the 3D view of the project. And zooming in um, on my area, I'll find it in the type selector, choose in this case 4 inch OPN coping, and then select the wall that I want to place the coping on. And when you first place it, um, the coping is going to be hovered over the wall. Now I just want to lock um, the coping down into place, so I'll go back to my section view, use the align key, and lock it to the wall. And it should show up, show up in place. Um, a couple things to keep in mind with the coping tool, um, or the coping model, is um, it shows in its true section form um, only under the detail view. If you to change it back to a medium or core setting, it shows as this more uh, schematic um, piece. Also, going back to a 3D view, you can find this. You can find this piece and stretch it out along the wall. And there are different parameters to miter the corners and. Um, whether it's an outside or an inside corner. And in an elevation, you can stretch it along the whole length of the wall as well.
You can also look for other parameters to adjust the coping. You can adjust the length of the legs so it comes down, and you can adjust its height um, off of the top of the wall to give you more room for blocking and things like that. Again, because uh, the coping shows up in any wall section you do, um, a coping is, is a good item to model in rather than just um, draw in or draft in. So you can see with a couple um, of adjustments to this raw wall, wall section, without actually adding any detail in or drawing anything in, I've actually got the wall section to look a lot more accurate and it's a lot better background to, to serve um, for when I start filling in more detail. So I'll put the wall section uh, aside for a second and I'll just cover, cover some basics when it comes to um, callouts. Zooming in, let's say if I want to do a um, callout plan detail of this area, you want to grab the bubble, so go to the um, go to the view tab and choose callout. And then um, also just like sections, using if you have the OPN template, you'll you'll find um, you can either choose floor plan or detail callout. And actually, this is really important that if this is a detail callout, you need to make sure you choose the detail bubble. If it's an enlarged call out if it's in a large plan like for a restroom or something then that would be the floor plan bubble but in this case it's a detail so I want to make sure I'm using the detail bubble click to place it the reason that's important is because only detail bubbles will show up in um, all your different plan uh, plan views the enlarged plans um, don't carry over so once I have a detail bubble placed, I can click to, to zoom into it. And again, um, I want to change my scale to be the correct scale. And then change the detail level to fine. You notice I have a, a structural wall, so I want to go ahead and hide that. So using my tab key, I want to find just the wall itself to hide. Once I have that highlighted, hide it in view. And let's say, for example, uh, that I have a, a column in here that I want to pocket around. I can achieve, I can actually um, fix this um, by fixing it, uh, the, the profile that's cut out in the wall by using the cut profile to tool. So if I go to the view tab, click on cut profile, and what that does is it allows me to select individual layers of the wall and change their shape. So once I have this CMU layer selected, I'll select it, it brings me into an edit mode where I can then um, use line work to cut that layer out. Oops. You'll notice uh, there's a blue control arrow, um, and the control arrow is pointing to the part of the wall you want to keep. So I actually want to change that to, to keep this part of the wall, cutting the rest of it out. I can also change how these walls join by using the wall join tool to, to be a little bit more accurate. So if you go to modify and then choose wall joins, this tool works by um, hovering over and selecting the, the um, area to modify. Once you've picked the area that you want to edit, you'll see in the option bar um, next to configuration, a previous and next button. If you keep clicking next, you'll toggle through all the different possible configurations that Revit can think of to join the layers of those, these walls. Once you have one uh, that you're happy with, just click in white space to accept that configuration and I'll hit escape a couple times to get out of the wall joins tool. And before I finish up with the setup of these views, there's one more thing I wanted to dive into and that's visibility and graphics and how to hide um, entire categories out of uh, linked models that you might need to. For example, a lot of the times you're going to you're going to see in your detail views the um, the grids of your structural model that's been linked in, or you're going to see a strange little blue symbol um, at your columns. Uh, for example, if I, it's not showing in my detail view, but if I close out of that, you see this weird kind of blue symbol. A lot of these things you need to hide um, 
by category out of your structural model that's been linked in. So to do that, go to uh, the visibility and graphics of the view by going to VG, and then in the tabs, click on the Revit links. And here, this gives you um, the ability to go in and actually go into the um, visibility graphics and the categories of the link structural model itself and turn them off individually, just like the layers in AutoCAD. So it's a little confusing at first because there's a couple screens to, to jump through, but um, just kind of follow along and bear with me on this. So under the Revit Links tab, find the structure model that you want to edit, and you're going to click um, the Display Settings button by Host View. Clicking that opens up the Revit uh, Link Categories window, which then, instead of by Host View, you're going to change to Customize. After clicking Custom, go to its model categories. Now you're inside the uh, model categories for the Revit Links model. Here, um, instead of by host view, you're going to pull it out and you're going to change it to customize again. Once you do that, you'll see that these categories are no longer grayed out. Now here you can turn off the categories that you don't want to see. And in the case of those strange blue symbols, you may actually need to click this check mark back here that says show categories from all disciplines. That'll give you an expanded list of categories to choose from. Those strange little blue symbols are actually analytical. Um, symbols and they'll be found by expanding your structural categories here. Once you've turned off the categories you don't want to see, hit OK and hit OK again um, to bring you back to your view. Now, that it's, now your view uh, should be set up and ready to start filling in more detail.